Looking through patents on gasifiers, I came across a rare but very interesting work by Comrade Shakhov, a survivor of World War II. The two patents I'm going to show you here are valuable because they are rare. Why? Those who have watched my video A Hundred Years of Firewood-Powered Vehicles and three parts of another sequel, which I hope to finish with the fourth part someday, know about the grandiose Soviet gasifiers that outdid Grandpa and Bert. They also know that all our engineering thought could do was copying the designs of Western gasifiers. Not because Soviet inventors were stupid, but because they tried to overtake and outstrip all the scientific power and knowledge of 200 years of Europe's industrial revolution as quickly as possible. And this was simply impossible. When I read our books about gasifier vehicles, I see a copy upon a copy. The only person who dealt with transverse gasifiers in the Soviet Union was Comrade Tokarev. Everyone who decided to delve into the subject of gasifiers has read his books. He learned from Mezin and managed to systematize the disparate knowledge into a single book, like Patanjali and his Diamond Sutras, for which he is to be commended. But he also copied Goen Pulin's transverse gasifier from the body to the filters. In 1945, Mezin replicated the water bubble filter exactly the same as in the West. But every now and then sprouts of Soviet original engineering gasifier thought emerged through the asphalt. When I see them, my attention immediately focuses. Let me show you how Comrade Shakhov proposed his variant of melting tuyer for a transverse gasifier in the heat of the war in 1943. Let's look at the picture. Tuyers melt all the time. Even if you make them of thick stainless steel, it won't help. Only a complicated cooling system with a copper edge will help, but there are not many people willing to make it even today. That's why the inventor suggested making just a replaceable tuyer from a piece of pipe. It is simply pushed inside when its edge melts. The amount of air to be supplied to the tuyer is regulated by the inserted jig. Having survived the war, Comrade Shakhov did not give up the gasifier business and in 1947, filed another patent for a product allowing to supply the right amount of water to depending on engine revolutions. I tried to replace 40% of the charcoal with water in my Volga car gasifier. But to know exactly how much water should be injected into the gasifier depending on the revolutions, I spent several years looking for an expert who would make a control microcomputer, which will know exactly how much water to inject into the gasifier according to my specifications. I had a lot of trouble with calibrating sensors, selecting pumps, and coding. I wouldn't repeat it, I still don't know how I've managed to make it. But Comrade Shakhov didn't bother. He just attached a wire to the air mixer. At higher RPM, more air is required to burn the gas. So, more water is also required, that's all. A kind of solution for the apocalypse, when there will be no electronics or someone capable of creating such a complex microcomputer as I have. 